Well, how is it going, my friends? I hope you're having a great day. Today, I want to take the opportunity to break down a brand new emergency 72 hour kit. Recently in a video, I took apart the ones that I already had, one for me, one for my wife, that we hadn't opened up in 10 years. And I, and I showed you what was in there. And honestly, I'm kind of on a quest right now to put together the ultimate emergency 72 hour kit. Um, and to help you figure out exactly what that might be for you. And before I get any further, I would love it if in the comments you would tell me your opinions. What would you make sure to include in a 72 hour kit beyond kind of the obvious stuff? 72 hours worth of food, maybe change of clothing and plenty of water. Let's move beyond that. What else do you think is dramatic, super, super important? I already got feedback from one of you who told me uh, that people often overlook entertainment and having something small, light, but entertaining to use could be extremely helpful, especially because oftentimes in an emergency, you kind of get stuck sitting, waiting stuff out, uh, sometimes in an emergency shelter. Uh, anyway, entertainment has, I think that's a great idea. So that's something we're going to include in our kit as we build our own going forward. But I came across this one. This is a ReadyWise uh, emergency survival backpack. ReadyWise is a brand. I see them all over the place. Um, I see them selling uh, emergency food at Costco. And so I thought, I'm gonna give this a shot, especially because this thing is, is uh, listed at $109.99 and it was on sale for $89.99. So save 20 bucks on it and basically get a feel for what's in their kit. Now, obviously I could have just read the side of the box, but I often find with kits that oftentimes in order to get the price as low as possible, we end up with a lot of really cheap materials, stuff I wouldn't actually find that useful in an emergency situation. So this is actually still packaged up. I've never even opened it before. We're gonna break right in. And we're gonna see what's actually inside and kind of rate this. I looked at a whole bunch of different emergency kits online, by the way. You can spend anywhere from about $100 to three, four, $500 even for a 72 hour kit. And honestly, some of that is going to definitely come down to what actual gear they put in there, like how complete the kit is. But a lot of it's going to come down to probably the quality of the gear. And so it's, it's kind of hard to know, though, until you actually get it in your hands. The nice thing is that these days, unlike years ago, um, these days you can send stuff back like most things. And so if I were going to buy a 72 hour kit on Amazon, I would make sure that returns were allowed. All right, here we go. This uh, seems fairly small and light for a full 72 hour kit. So um, we'll see. Here we go. All right, so there's a backpack. This feels of a similar kind of quality as basically just a regular school backpack. It's not even really oversized. It's, it seems to be about a standard school backpack size. Um, also, like the straps aren't like extra padded and, you know, we're not getting uh, at sort of the joints here, the joints, right? At the seams, <laughs> I should know better. I'm sorry, mom. Uh, at the seams here, we're not getting like extra stitching and stuff. I Basically, we just have a normal ordinary backpack, which is probably fine. This isn't something that we're taking out uh, into the woods and going uh, hiking with every other weekend, right? This is an emergency kit. Okay, when I open up these pockets, I'm just curious to see I think everything's just right now, it's just all in the main pocket. We're going to talk in the future as we put together our own 72 hour kit. We'll talk a bit about um, packing that kit in the most useful way. Okay, so these there's front pockets here, but none of them has anything in it. I do have a couple of straps here that could come in handy to put something through. Uh, I do have like water bottle holders on the side. I have another little pocket up here in the top, but that's just kind of this little mesh spot here. Maybe you'd throw a couple of little things up there. So now we're going to get into what looked like maybe the main pocket, not the main pocket. There's also one inside here. Again, very, very basically standard school bag, kind of backpack, nothing in there. Okay. Everything seems to be in the big pocket, which is here. Now it's time to break it out. It does have one of these little flappy pockets there, which I like in a backpack. Okay. A few things. Okay. 
that's the whole thing. That's the whole kit right there. I'm going to keep this available, visible, so that I can see everything that's supposed to be in here. Okay, so first things first, we have food. I'm jumping to the food first. This is actually something that stood out to me with this kit compared to most of the other ones I found. Basically every 72 hour kit I found on Amazon, the food was just ration bars. I've done a couple videos now on ration bars. If you don't know why I don't like them for emergency food, you can go check out this, this video right here. I'll link to it right there. It's not my preference. You should see why. This one actually has real food, right? This is apple cinnamon cereal. This one says you just boil some water, add the contents of the pouch into the water, let it heat, cover it, and let it stand for 12 to 15 minutes and eat it, right? So basically just regular survival food. Here's another one. This is oatmeal. Basically the same instructions. You boil some water, mix what's in the pouch in with the water, which we would need a bowl to do that. And this doesn't come with like a big mixing bowl. Also, this has four, this has a thousand calories worth of oatmeal in it, which means I'm probably supposed to eat this over the course of the three days. I don't love that either. We've, I've talked about that on this channel when I talked about emergency food, but I like that it's real food at least. So there's that. Creamy pasta and veggies, Southwest rice and beans, um, a whey milk alternative. So basically kind of like a milk powder and hearty tortilla soup. We've got plenty of food here to last a person for their 72 hours. Again, as long as you can manage to mix it all up really well and then only dish out enough <laughs> to, to eat for that one meal. If, if, Cause some of these look like they're supposed to last more than one meal. Although these kind of main meal ones like the soup, that might just be one meal. It's four servings. That's 600 calories. That's probably just one dinner. So not too bad. It's mostly the breakfast that they don't separate them out very well. Next here is water. Now this, this I'm not so sold on. <laughs> it comes with five water pouches and each water pouch has 4.227 ounces, just over uh, half a cup. I'm supposed to survive on less than three cups of water. I'm a little bit confused as to why this is the amount of water. Honestly, I think the expectation here is that we're going to have to use a lot more than this. It says drink a minimum of two bags per person per day for marine emergencies drinking water as needed for land-based emergencies. You're going to want a lot more water than that. I guess it's a minimum to survive on. But if I'm again, packing a 72 hour kit, I'm not trying to just not die. You know, I'm not necessarily trying to like live in comfort here, but I'm going to want to not die. And I feel like I would die if I only drink that much water. All right, let's talk about the rest of the stuff. Again, this bag was not even near full. I could definitely throw a bunch more water in there. But let's go through the rest of what's in here. Okay, we got some fuel tablets. All right, I'm a little curious as to what exactly they mean. I've never used tablets quite like this before. I honestly don't know what these are. Some of you who do know what they are, are probably gonna laugh at me right now, and that's okay. But uh, I don't know what they are. So <laughs> I'm going to have to actually do a little bit of research. It doesn't come with any sort of instructions for what to do with these tablets. I have a face mask, I guess, just in case I get sent to California or somewhere where they might still require those. No, it's <laughs> sorry. No, really, though, just for certain, especially medical type emergencies or various situations, um, even like say a volcano erupts and there's ash in the air, right? There are lots of situations where having a face mask would actually be really helpful. Okay, these are water purification tablets. Uh, each one of these comes with two, so two, four, six, eight, ten. So I could purify water, uh, which is great for anything that's not a marine emergency. So maybe that's part of what they're thinking is hopefully I'll have access to some kind of water source and then I can just purify it. They do actually have instructions for the aqua tabs at least. That's nice. All right, we've got some waterproof matches, strike on box matches, just a little pack of those. Okay, not bad. A five function whistle. I don't know why I would need five different whistles. Just kidding. Dad jokes all around here. No, it's five functions because it functions as five different things. In fact, my wife's 72 hour kit had something very similar in it. It has a compass, it is a whistle, 
one of the five. Um, there's a mirror on it. It says it's a signal mirror. Oh, it's on the inside. Okay, if I open it up, there's a little mirror. Yep, right there. I can use that to signal that the aircraft's flying over. I can shine the sun's light back at it and um, possibly, I don't know if I'm, there you go, see? It's actually amazing how well just a little mirror like that can signal. It's also a waterproof container for matches. And right here on the side, there's a little tiny flint. Uh, I'm not convinced that will be very effective, but at least it's a flint. We also have a little cup here. Um, it's really, really light. I have one very similar to this in size, maybe slightly bigger, but uh, it's, it's a bit heavier. And so that one I know I can confidently, literally just like put it on top of the fire and boil water or whatever in it, and it's gonna be just fine. This one, I don't know how well it's gonna hold up, but again, we're talking about an emergency 72 hour kit, having it light might actually be kind of handy. All right, this one does come with a deck of playing cards. My wife's kit also had a deck of playing cards. Here's your most basic form of entertainment. Make sure you know some card games. <laughs> In today's world, I'm a little bit surprised at how little some people, especially young people, know about just how to entertain themselves with things that aren't digital. And so uh, knowing some card games is an, an important part of being able to make it through an emergency situation. Playing cards, I think that's a great idea. Okay, this is a little mini camp stove. I'm wondering, I think that maybe these little fuel tablets are made for this. It says fuel, I'm like, when I think fuel, it's like, well, maybe that's supposed to be food, but more likely than not, it's for burning. I, I'm assuming that that's what it's for. And then you should be able to set some things on top of it. Let's open it up and just see what we think about this. It folds out, you set those right on it, and then if this were bigger, <laughs> I could set this above it maybe, but it's not wide enough. So I would need to use like a little mess kit or something, or I guess roast stuff on a stick. Uh, there's definitely with those four tablets, not going to be any way that I'm going to be able to boil enough water to cook all this food over the course of three days. So we're going to need some other heat source, but maybe the assumption is that this as a heat source is only going to be needed for some of the 72 hours. You can see how the wheels are already turning as to what I would do differently to uh, make this quite a bit better. That said, my 72 hour kit's probably gonna be much larger and quite a bit heavier, but I'm okay with that. This was really light. All right, we got this thing. It's just a little, it's like a grocery sack. It's a thin grocery sack. It's a bag. It's a waste bag. Okay. It is handy to have a garbage bag in there. I would probably just throw a normal kitchen gr uh, garbage bag into my 72 hour kit. But of course, you know, for this, they're gonna go with something orange and something that seems survival-ish. All right, here we have, uh, this is the rain poncho. Um, I also have something I think that's gonna be better for this that I'm gonna talk about in another video here soon. Okay, but uh, you've probably seen these before, but you, you can just see in the picture there. It's just a regular old thin, lightweight, uh, waterproof, almost like a big garbage bag with cutouts for your face and your hands. Um, and it, it does the job to keep you wet. It says it's backpack coverable, but probably not on people my size. All right, next we have an emergency blanket. These Mylar blankets, they're great. Um, they actually do reflect a lot of heat. I am also gonna make a video on that here soon because I recently, or actually it was late last winter, did a bunch of testing in the outdoors to see just how well emergency blankets were reflecting my heat. And it was better than I thought. So good to have one of these on hand, but again, I might have a better recommendation for you. This is really light and small. I've used several, I've had several of these before. Actually, no, it's probably about right. Yeah, that unfolds to be, it says 140 by 210 centimeters. So almost one and a half meters by um, just over two meters. So if you think about that, for those of us who think in feet, a meter is about a yard or three feet. So we're talking about, you know, six feet by four, not quite four and a half feet. So that's how big that is. Not huge, but enough to cover most of us and help you stay a little bit warmer. All right, next, I do have a hand pressing flashlight. This is kind of a cool concept. The idea of not relying just on batteries. As we've seen, batteries in flashlights get ruined. Although this must have some kind of battery in it, otherwise this wouldn't be on but 
I don't see where I would replace it. So it's not like a regular little alkaline battery. But what's going on here is, let's see, I, there we go. I charge it up like that. So even if I don't have battery power, I can just light it up that way and at least get some, maybe this is just supposed to mostly recharge that battery. Anyway, I can get power that way. They also have ones where you can shake it and it's like this thing wiggles back and forth in there and that generates an electrical current and charges up the battery and makes it so you can run it. So um, definitely better than the solar powered flashlight concept, <laughs> but the idea of being able to use renewable energy and not rely on batteries. All right, next, this is just some like tissue in one of those little tiny packets. Not a bad thing to have on hand, not something I necessarily would have thought of to have like tissue. If I'm going to use anything, it'll probably be just wipes, regular wipes. So, um, but dry tissue is lighter, so it's not bad. Then this is the first aid kit. I think this is really funny because it's like, there are 64 items in this survival kit. And then it's like, there are 36 items in your first aid kit. So this is more than half of those 64 items. And it's this big. Because <laughs> every Band-Aid counts, right? All right, there's a couple little two by two gauze swabs. Um, a handful of Band-Aids. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10 regular size Band-Aids, um, a handful of the kind of small, like not quite butterfly Band-Aids, they're just rectangular, but they're that size of the little butterfly Band-Aids. And then one of those, I don't even know what you call that shape. Um, it's like kind of like an hourglass shape. I don't know if you can see that through there. But yeah, it's like an hourglass shape sort of. Uh, I'm sure there's a name for that. Uh, three little alcohol pads. Two, uh, three, uh, three antiseptic wipes. So little wet wipes that are antiseptic. And then <laughs> I'm guessing for their 30, however many items in this uh, kit here, they're counting that there are, let's see, 10 cotton tips. They're counting each one of these individually. So some cotton swabs. This is a first aid kit that will handle a couple of cuts and scrapes, but it wouldn't handle anything beyond that. For my emergency kit, I'm gonna have something quite a bit more capable than this. Something to think about though, because I have a family, okay? There are seven of us, I have five children. There are things that I'm going to want to have an emergency kit that we don't each need to have. Uh, and so one of the things, like when it comes to first aid, I'm probably gonna have more first aid stuff and I'm gonna carry a fair amount of it in my kit because I can carry the most. I also probably need the most food and water, but I can carry the most stuff, right? So I'm gonna put a little bit extra of those things in there, but also probably a bigger first aid kit. And everybody else with me doesn't need their own huge first aid kit. Maybe something little and simple like this would be sufficient for each of my kids to have just in case there was a need and we weren't all together at some point in time. Chances are I'd put just a bit more in both mine and my wife's first aid kits. That way we could really take care of things if something bad happened. And that's it. There is our 72 hour kit. What is missing? I want to know from you, what would you add to this? I know some things that we had in ours that are not here. I mentioned some already, a change of clothes, a bit more water. I can think of a handful of other things, but before I lead you on too much, I'm curious to know, what would you add to this 72 hour kit or replace entirely? Or maybe you say, just throw it out and start over. Uh, what would you do to create for yourself or for your family, the ultimate 72 hour kit. Let me know in the comments below. I am trying really hard to prepare the ultimate 72 hour kit. And we're gonna be talking about that here on this channel in an upcoming video or two or three, because I think I'm gonna do one just on first aid kits. Hope that's of interest to you too. If it is, again, let me know in the comments below. I also hope that you are all about preparedness just like I am. Of course, I mean, I like other things too, but preparedness is a big one, right? And so that's why I made this channel and I hope that that's why you'll stick with me and join me in my next video.